Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Dying to Know More. Today we are talking about day and night cycle in dying like to see human. And today with me someone I really don't have to introduce, lead game designer Timon Smektawa. Hello Timon. Hello everyone, hi Paulina. Okay, so we know that day and night cycle is one of the most important aspects in Dying Light 2 Stay Human. And the difference between Dying Light 1 and what we've already seen in Dying Light 2 is quite big. So what changed more, day or night? Well, both of them changed, but I think night, definitely. So why? Okay, so uh, I think we took everything that was good about the night experience in the first game and added to it expanded on it. And I think in Dying Light 2, the night experience is not only about surviving the night, it's also about giving players opportunities and chances to explore the other side of Villador, to see Villador from another angle, the night angle. Right, but what is the difference? Well, let me start off with saying that we have uh, analyzed the data from the first game and we have uh, discovered that a lot of players were skipping the night part. Mm -hmm. A, because they thought it's too difficult for them, and B, they felt they don't have any motivation to actually go out at night and face the horrors of the night. So we wanted to fix both of those issues. Okay, so can you give me any examples of, of what we can do at night? Okay, so there's this rule in our world which says the day is for humans, but the night is for the infected. Right. And what that means is that during the night, the infected leave their nests, the dark places, the dark hollows, to roam the streets. But what that also means is that now those places are free for players to explore. And the best loot in the game is exactly there. Okay, so are the interiors still dangerous while the infected are outside? Uh, yes, they are, because some of them are still inside, some of them didn't left, and now it's your decision. You can go in, guns blazing, throwing molotovs, swinging your machetes, your axes, using weapon modifications, or you can try a more stealthy approach. Try to sneak around, stay quiet, and loot all of that, all of that precious loot without being seen, without being discovered. Okay, but what would happen if I get discovered? Well, chase, obviously. Oh, that's terrifying. And it is. Actually, for me, the chase is the most terrifying, the most exciting, and the most adrenaline pumping element of the whole game. So it starts with those special infected that we call the howlers. Their goal is to alert every other infected around that you are there, about your presence. So when they see you, they make a lot of noise, they scream, and now the chase starts. The fast-moving units, the virals come in, and you have to save yourself. And will I be able to escape the chase? Well, yes, obviously, that's the whole point of it. But it all depends on what you do in this moment. So at the beginning, it's actually quite easy. You just need to run to the rooftops, find some place to hide, maybe some bushes or maybe hide behind some object. It's actually easy to avoid the chase. But if you stay careless, if you stay reckless, if you spend a little bit more time on the ground, the chase ramps up. And then more units come in, the special infected come in, and now it gets really tense. And on the fourth level of chase, when the volatiles start chasing you, the best way to do is to just run directly to the safe house or you're gone. <laughs> okay, uh, but can I hunt them, the uh, infected? That's a surprising question, but yes, you can. We have those guys called Craftmasters, and they can upgrade your equipment, but they need some trophies that can be collected only on special infected. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can find those special infected inside GRU anomalies, dark hollows, a lot of other dangerous places, but you can also lure those special infected during the chase. So we saw some more advanced players actually doing that. They were starting the chase, ramping the chase up, and when the special infected started chasing them, they killed them, looted those precious trophies, and then ran away. So yes, it is possible. That sounds so scary, crazy people. <laughs> yes, they are crazy, but this is only for the most advanced, most hardcore players. Okay, but what about the horror? Can we still feel tension? I know what you think in hearing about those hardcore guys, but yes, definitely there is still tension. And even the most advanced players 
feel the pressure because of the infection mechanic. So the main character, Aiden, is infected as well. So what that means is that he cannot stay in darkness for too long. Mm -hmm. So the longer he stays in darkness, the, his infection rises and at some point he just dies. So you don't want to do that. And even the most hardcore players have constantly to look at their infection level and wonder, do I still have some time? Or maybe I should run to the UV light as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so night full of monsters, yes. chase mechanics, yes. um, challenging encounters, yes. dark hollows, progressing yes. infections, yes. time pressure. Yes. That seems like a lot. Yes, and it is tense. And uh, I think we have kept the tension and the horror of the first game, but did it a little differently, giving a little bit more space for players to actually enjoy the night mechanics more. And what I like about it most is that there's this, this nice risk and reward mechanic going on. So the more you push, the more you try to use those opportunities that the night gives you, the scarier it gets. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, it, it can get crazy, but also, as always, as in real life, after each night, there comes a dawn, there comes a new day, then the survivors, they start, they start filling the streets. And this is a nice little moment of releasing that tension and like catching your breath after the, 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 the horrors of the night. Thank you, Timo, for all of these tips. And I hope I will be brave enough to play at night. Well, fingers crossed and thank you for the invitation. And thank you all for watching us today and remember that Dying Light to Stay Human is very close. So see you in the city on February 4th.